then. When I started this as a skeptic, I just wanted to know the truth. Still today, that's all I want to know is the truth. We've discovered a lot of things, a lot of pieces of metal, a lot of patina, a lot of different alloys, a lot of alloys that don't match modern alloys. And that was something that became a trend. There was over a hundred metal pieces tested from Tula, the pieces that we've documented like I'm showing here right now. These pieces all came back with no match. However, when you have something like this, where it's really shiny, the lines are kind of off. You can see where the tools are. In these items, you don't. But here, you clearly can see where it picks up, where it starts again. Lots of little errors and, you know, not straight curvatures. We got no match after no match after no match of many different types of metals. Until 155, this piece was from another person and it matched. It was the only match that we had tested until that point. You know, we tested a lot of things like that book that looks similar to these things. And it tested at 37,000 years old from the ring. Well, that ring, not only the piece that, that connected it, but also the metal of the ring itself, all tested and the book all tested as an ancient alloy. But when we started testing some of these others, we got a very different story. 20% plus in zinc is a real uh, anomaly, if you will, in terms of the ancient brass that we found. We've tested, like I say, over a hundred and none of them have over that much zinc. So it's really a, a giveaway. Here we test this ring of this new book and it has a rhodium plating. And so the, the alloy also matched up with, with a modern alloy. What looked like gold leaf on there was not. It was actually just colored brass. So that kind of inspired more you know, investigation. And you know, we purchased some of these pieces here. Like you can see this very yellow bronze, the very shiny bronze cube. You know, this piece here from Guerrero, the bronze little hemisphere. Um, this this tube cylinder piece here also, claiming it was from the Yucatan. These little discs and balls from Guerrero. So we, we went and tested through all of these pieces. You know, clearly these, you can see the patina. There's green on the inside. The coloration of the surface is definitely far from shiny. You know, some pieces like that last one were, you know, fairly shiny, but you put it up next to uh, <laughs> something like this cylinder here with the scroll in it, and th there is just no, no comparison there in terms of age, which, you know, on, on a metal is something that you would really want to see um, pretty much regardless. You, you would want some pitting, some sort of, uh, you know, oxidation, uh, different, you know, depending on the copper content. A lot of the ancient alloys have a higher copper content and less zinc. And that's why you see this type of patina uh, versus, you know, the 20 plus percent zinc really reduces the, the patina. And so some of them look like they have some patina, the rainbow hues. Um, you know, they're not the same rainbow as like this piece here for sure. This is a, a, a wide range of color, but on these newer pieces, like you can see right there on that lid, um, you know, the rainbow look that that's usually from a torch. If, uh, if you wanted to add that to modern bronze. So now, you know, we have multiple other pieces coming out just since our investigation has started, uh, similar items, you know, but clearly very, very shiny bronze again here. And again, when you look at the carving marks and how the tooling is picking up and, and starting and is sloppy in many cases, um, that, that's inconsistent from, you know, the 20,000 pieces that we've documented from Oelos.
and Tula. And, you know, the alloys of the metal, you know, one argument is, is that this is an advanced civilization. We've already been blown away by 5,000 other different things that these pieces exhibit or that we found along the way. So, you know, could they have, could they have had this type of, of brass? Well, it would be uh, really uncommon just due to the smelting and, and techniques that were used at that time and we clearly see all these pieces that are being documented from Tula and and Awelos and and clearly even and, and even in Guerrero with the book that we dated and, and clearly you see commonalities that's why you know the the books that we've documented have a much more reddish look than this very shiny brass look you know inside of this cube here there was a, uh, you know, a small alien figure, and when the piece arrived, the window was was shattered, and the, the piece on the inside was also broken into a few pieces, and so it was really interesting. We got to see, you know, how it was mounted in there, and uh, this is this is that here. You can see the uh, clear glues and this post here doesn't really say a ton we're going to get the uh, xrf scans on that done soon as well you know some of these pieces here like this one has a, a modern alloy composition but clearly was full of patina which is something also that has to be analyzed in detail by analyzing that patina we can find out if you know how, how exactly it's it's penetrated into the metals and you know the different ways in terms of how it's layered and, and applied on there there are ways of applying rapid oxidation and rapid patina and considering the entire piece was covered in this case uh, it's definitely of, of suspicion something that would need to be looked at more carefully i think uh, considering it is a modern alloy and that every one of these other pieces isn't um, th those definitely stick out and not only do they stick out with the alloy, but they stick out in the color and, and the tarnish and the wear in such ways. You know, you have these big, big pieces here. This is a, uh, you know, a large UFO with very detailed drawings. We see a lot of the Virgin of Guadalupe and, and certain things. Also the overuse of the Buga chip patterning and um, that, that sort of thing just inconsistencies with the pieces we've documented is just another red flag also the dirt and the incrustation on these pieces it just washes right off which you know there are pieces that just wash off but when you have this type of uh, carving for the shading you know there's lots of grooves and pits in there and and there should absolutely be some incrustation especially you know around the rings um, where the uh, holes are and that sort of thing, you, you would find this in ancient metal. Um, also seeing, you know, this Morse code type language, um, inconsistent for sure, um, from anything that we've, we've documented. None of this is a indicative, you know, reason to believe that these are modern. However, every piece of evidence counts when it comes to this sort of stuff. And we've been documenting these pieces for over five years. And one thing that I often brag about is that many of the pieces that we find and study, you know, everything points to antiquity. And, you know, it, it's that way from the dig sites. It's that way on a lot of different things. So to find these type of pieces with these perfect round holes and, um, you know, that's not common with the book that we dated seeing the, the grooves be so consistent and uh, yet inconsistent depending on you know wh which one you're looking at and how it was applied Th these are things that with the pieces we've studied it, it almost looks as if they do it wet oftentimes it's so smooth and buttery you don't see those type of you know tooling marks there there is there is some, you know, especially in the Awelos pieces, some traces of tooling marks, but nothing like you see here on these type of pieces. The shininess, the metal alloys, the odd iconography, <laughs> um, you know, all, all things to look at when you're trying to consider what is being produced and what's not. And, you know, when I say being produced and what's not, 
in, in our book, Anunnaki America, I did an interview with an elder Toltec, and he discussed that this was back in 2022, I believe, when I had this interview, and he discussed clearly that he um, had been offered opportunities to make pieces and to sell fake pieces and that sort of thing uh, in this type of genre that there would be you know funding and and that sort of thing um, done protections you know these guys that sell a lot of these pieces they have a lot of money coming in and so to protect themselves oftentimes they have to do things and, and you know make make way and so Nonetheless, this was documented that the cartels were involved with creating fake pieces to cover up the real ones. And I think with some of the things that we're seeing here on these, that absolutely could be a, a real thing. You know, we don't see drill holes and, and certain things that are look like they were done yesterday. Modern ad additions to metal, modern clear looking glue. I mean, all, all the glue we have is, is definitely not clear. Um, so all of this is going to be tested. That's why you see these research bags and these pieces being put in there. It's going to get researched and we're going to look into it. Um, clearly there's more to the story and being able to isolate, you know, what, what's genuine and what's not is, is a big thing. You know, this piece here, it does test as a modern alloy. It's the one on the right versus, uh, or the one on the left here. That, that definitely looks like a different level of quality and however it does test as a modern bronze alloy so it's interesting you know the book looks very similar to that however it's much different too when you really when you lay it down and, and look at it here you can see that these carvings were put in this lid and on the other side of it you can see it poke through here there's a nail in the foot we tested that nail that nail with uh, xrf rather and it was a hundred percent iron there was no anything else in there and that's not going to be common you know that technique was used in in ancient mesoamerica but it was always with a, a tin or lead or something like that it was not you know 100 percent iron they didn't have again that, that kind of refinery nor do we have any evidence that they did anything like that with the pieces that we've documented officially coming out of the ground uh, with our teams and, and with people who are there that we know and trust um, these pieces here are, are not being documented in that fashion. And I hope, you know, if they are genuine, that they are, because there's a lot of false positives here that would need to be looked at, um, not just in other pieces, but in other pieces around the world. I mean, clearly, if there was an ancient technology that had this type of, you know, stuff. But again, you know, with these types of inks and, and this type of paper on these scrolls, you saw in the last scroll there was you know, what looked like a Christ figure with modern depictions. We see a lot of things from, you know, the, the frescas, uh, 13th, 16th century, I think it is. Um, inside these things, there's no, there's no patina whatsoever. There's no pitting. There's a little dirt. And that's about it. And it washes off very easily. So we'll keep looking at these pieces keep researching them we'll be sending off the glues and everything else to the lab um, and we're going to carbon date and look at these paints and pigments off the scrolls you know it's it's one theory as well with these scrolls that they might be actually real and the vessels that were created for them could be modern and you know if it was just the one that came out I could see it possibly being that way. Um, now there's been three of them documented. They all have similar looking vessels. What was interesting is that the vessel was offered separate than the scroll from the seller when I initially was doing dealings with him. I didn't think anything really of it at that point, but now I look back and it's interesting that he would be willing to you know, separate such an indicative piece from the scroll. So. Just adds more question for sure. We have a lot of different um, materials to go off of. You know, some of these glasses that uh, seat on top of these things. Um, we do find glass, but I believe some of these glass pieces, these glass skulls, could be being, uh, you know, reproduced. 
there's there's clear quality um, and and style concerns with with some of these pieces uh, is there real spaceships is there real um you know obviously the bronze book that we've dated yes i believe that if there's being replicas made of something that there's probably a real one somewhere as well so uh, maybe not exactly they may elaborate or or go off on their own but likely the idea stemmed from something original is what it seems like from a lot of these pieces and a lot of different things so we'll keep researching it again like i say and any news that we get we'll update here till next time